In this video, we're going to be talking about the machine current settings from inside the cam tree inside Bobcat version 32. So we have two ways of getting into the current settings, and there's actually more than one set of current settings. So the first way is when you get to the milling tab, so when you have the contextual menu pop up, you can go right up here to the current settings. Now this current settings button is going to be the job settings. So if I want to make a settings change specifically for this milling job, that's the current settings I'd want to go to after I've actually started my milling job. If I want to make a change to my default settings so that all of these settings get automatically put in, we're going to go to the cam tab and then right down here you have current settings. You can also get to this by just right clicking on the word cam defaults and you'll have your current settings. So when we launch the current settings, we have things for our machine parameters. So you have the make of your machine and if all you're using is a three axis machine, the BC3X mill should run your machine. The most important thing here is that we get the right post processor. But if you did want to create your own machine, you could just say add and you could give the machine a name. So I'll just call it new machine. And then you tell it what type it is and then how many axes. When you're done, you hit OK. And you'll see we now have our new machine as our make. Now I'm going to go back up to the BC3X mill because that's my default for just about everything. Right here, we're going to tell it the maximum number of tools. And then down here, we have our rapid feed rate. Now, I recommend entering a feed rate that's probably below what your machine is actually going to run at. And that's because a lot of times your machine's not able to hit the rapid feed rate that we think it's going to be hitting. If you think your machine can go at 1,700 inches a minute or 1,200 or even 500, it all depends on the amount of time that it gets to travel that far. But Bobcad doesn't have any of that buildup time. We can just immediately start counting the rapid time at, in this case, 180 inches per minute. Or if you had it set to 1,800, all of your rapids are calculated based on the machine being able to go 1,800 inches a minute whenever it can. So you want to get in here and just set a more accurate rapid feed rate. It doesn't have to be perfect for the machine, but we just use this to get us cycle times. So we want to use this as accurately as possible. And by having it go way too fast, it's not benefiting us in any sort of way. Now, right over here, we want to set up our maximum spindle speed. And this one's important because if you have a router and you run at 20,000 RPM or your spindle can go up even higher than that, you're going to want to make sure to set this to whatever the maximum spindle speed you can hit is. Because if you leave this at 10,000, even if you create a feature and you output the feed rate at 20,000, if you post the code, we're going to automatically drop it to the maximum spindle speed. So you'll end up with a 10,000 maximum spindle speed inside your program, even if your job is telling it to go 20,000 RPM. The other option here is your maximum cutting feed rate. And you really want to set this up for the linking that you might use. If you use high speed machining, the maximum cutting feed rate is used for the linking when we're doing some of our retract moves. And so if your machine can't hit 500, you'll rarely see this output in the code. But if you're using the high speed machining, it will output this number. And so if you didn't know that this was the number it was pulling from, then you might accidentally get a bunch of F 500s inside your code and either get errors at the machine or it's going to be moving really, really fast. So you want to set this to your maximum cutting feed rate that's realistic for you. Or if you don't really go over a very quick feed rate, set it to what your machine's not going to error out on. Because when it is doing these link moves, it should be safe to do the link moves. We're not going to run into anything. But we can't leave the maximum feed rate at 500 for those moves if the machine can't physically take 500 for the feed rate. So drop it down to something like 200 or 250. And that's what we would use for your link moves for high-speed machining. Now over on the left, we then have our machine definition. And this is just the basic build of the machine. And if you want, you can actually set up the size of your machine through here. So the only real thing we're going to set up in here would be the size of the machine. So you have your Y, your X, and your Z here. Now, when we start on the Y, you'll see that the table limits are minus 12 and 12. And that's because for the virtual machine, what we're defining here, everything's based off the center of the table. So we can go 12 inches negative, 12 inches positive for a total distance of 24 inches. So if this was not the right size, make sure to do it based on kind of the total width of the table. Just give us the width, divide it in half, make one of them negative and one of them positive, and that's how you're going to center yourself on your virtual table. So we have our Y, same thing for the X, you do from the center away, so minus 28 and then 28. 
And then down here for Z, we set this one a little bit differently. So zero would mean if there's no tool in the spindle, the spindle can touch the table. Can't go into the table at all, but it can touch it. And then when it raises up, it goes up to 24 inches high. Now, if that spindle has the ability to go into the table at all, so if it actually could drop in and go further than that, you can put a negative number, but you can also use a zero. Now, if it can't touch the table when you take the tool out and the spindle is just going to go down and say one inch above the top of the table, you'd say, I want to go one inch to 24. So the spindle is going to stop one inch above the top of the table, and then it can go up to 24 inches tall. I'll put a zero back on there. Then we have our posting tab over here on the left. Now, the posting tab is where we're going to set up our default post processor specifically for the machine that we have set up under machine parameters. So if we change this machine, we want to make sure to pick the proper post processor. And all you're going to do is hit select. And then to find your C drive, you're going to go over here to the left and click on local disk C. And then we're going to open up the folder named Bobcad Cam Data. And then we're going to go down to the Bobcad Cam V32 file. In here, we'll find our posts folder. So we'll open that up. And then we have lathe, mill, mill turn, and wire EDM, just depending on what type of machine you have set up. And then I can go in and pick the machine and the post that I want to use together. So now anytime I pick this machine, it's going to pick the BC3X mill for me. Down below that, we have our NC file path, and this is where we store a copy of the NC code when you post your code. This is where we're going to try and save it. Right down here, we have our NC file extension. So if you bring your code out to your machine in any way that it needs to read a file format, not a direct connection with the machine like an RS-232, then you're going to want to make sure you have the proper file extension. .NC is probably the most common, but your machine may also accept a .txt. There's a .tap. There's a bunch of different files. You just have to find out what your machine is going to want. Right down here, we have our program number. So the number now is just a number. We use it as a placeholder, but you will be able to change it using this little flyout menu right here. You can actually change the program number on the fly right there. Right down here, we have our sequence number. So you can tell it what number you want to start at and what number you want to increment by. So if I say start at 1 and increment by 1, we're going to start at line 1. So it'll be N1, N2, N3. And then if we said start at 10 and increment by 10, it'd be N10, N20, N30, just depending on if you want those line numbers or not. If you do not want the line numbers, there's two ways to take them out. You can turn them off completely from inside the post processor or you can set both of these numbers to zero and we won't output the line numbers anymore. Down here, we can output sub programs. So you can do output for a sub program as well as sub programs for specific operations. Right down here, we have used transform planes and index systems as well as machine rapid handling. If you have a machine that has the problem called dog leg rapids, you just have to check that the machine does dog leg rapid move and then we'll be able to handle the machine rapid so it won't dog leg rapid anymore down here we have our output arcs in a four axis nc program so this is just asking if we're using a fourth axis output are we allowed to output arcs in it and then right here is automatic comments so automatic comments are in the post processor already and they're going to be things like a tool change when it happens in the post a note's going to pop up that's going to say next cut next tool or if a tool change isn't happening, it'll say next cut, same tool. And that just lets you see very quickly a comment that tells you kind of what's going on inside the post when it's ripping through the machine. And then right here, we finally have the multi-axis posting. And for three axis and kind of for what we're going through in this set of videos, this isn't going to come into play too much. Most of these settings will be set up if you have four and five axis when we build the post processor. So it's not something you really have to mess with too much. The only thing you want to make sure of is just make sure under standard here, you have it set up for machine compensation and Z only. If you change that to anything else, you might lose your compensation for your G43 uh, tool and height compensations. When we're all done in here, we can hit OK. And that's going to be our default current settings. Now, if we go in and we right click on milling job and we go to current settings in here, it's pretty much the same menu except specifically for this job. So we have our machine parameters. We have our posting page. We have our multi-axis posting. And then we have comments. And you can actually go in and input comments right here. And you have up to 15 comments to fill out. And these comments are going to show up in the beginning of the post-processed code, as well as when you generate a setup sheet, they're going to pop up in there as well. 
And when we're all done, we can go ahead and hit OK. And just talking about the flyouts real fast for the current settings, if you click this arrow right here, you'll actually see the program number. And that's a very easy way to make the change right there. And that concludes the video on the current settings from inside the Bobcat version 32.